Well, welcome, folks, to Wise Lives. We're here for another episode. It's great to be with you today. Uh, my name's Nick. I'm the minister of the church at the Welsh Sheffield, and I'm joined today. We're going to talk about discipleship. It's one of the key topics uh, that we like to dig into in Wise Lives, what it is to be a radical follower of Jesus. So I'm joined today by my good friend, Naomi. Naomi's part of the staff team here at the Well. Hey, Gnomes. Hi. Great to be with you. Do you want to just tell us what you do, what your role is here? Okay, so my role at the Well is I am the Deeper Ministry School Leader, Coordinator, Director. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Add some more. Yeah, and so Naomi, you, you've been with us from the very beginning since we planted the church uh, five years ago now. You've watched it grow from very, very tiny beginnings and, mm -hmm. and God's kind of cloud on the horizons. Uh, and so you're, you've kind of, you know, you know how it works. And also, um, we're going to talk about discipleship and, and I, would, um, I would commend you to listen to what Naomi has to say about discipleship uh, because uh, it's been your, you, 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 to me, uh, I've watched you choose to follow Jesus. Yeah. Uh, in the everyday, in the ups and the downs, in the tough decisions and the and the easier ones. Uh, and Naomi is a disciple of Jesus. So we just sort of thought we'd throw that around a little bit today. And we're going to talk specifically about... Discipleship and the Deeper School of Ministry. Deeper School of Ministry. So you can sign up to our Deeper School. It starts every September uh, by going to wellsheffield.com slash deeper. You can find out more about it. There's some video testimonies on there about people that have done it beforehand. It's a, it's a Just give us a quick overview of how it works. Well, we meet um, one or two, there's an option, days a week. And we have corporate teaching, worship, and then we get really practical as well. And um, we do a journey together. So it is about um, discussions, um, doing the journey together. But we also do things like we get out on the street. Um, other years, we have worked with the Roma children in Sheffield, which is so much fun. And we've done a whole heap of things from um, driving down to the Calais refugee jungle and um, to jumping on planes to other parts of the world. And also, being from our own homes and rooms during lockdown where we jumped onto Zoom. Yeah, that was different, but it worked. That, that didn't was it? different, but it worked. And you know, I think this year is going to be an epic. Every year of Deeper is epic, but I think this one is going to be particularly epic because we're emerging into a world which is kind of new and unknown yeah, to yeah. many of these specs. Yeah. Again, it's a new challenge of how to actually follow Jesus yeah. in the way that things look now and the opportunities that we do have, but also some of the restrictions and so on. Yeah. Okay, let's jump in. So we're talking about discipleship. Discipleship is the is uh, as a church here. When we try to design what we do, we try and have that as our as our output. What are we trying to achieve? We're trying to raise disciples of Jesus who raise other disciples of Jesus in time, which is of course what we see in the Bible. So, what does being a disciple mean to you? It's a good question. I think for me, it literally means how do I walk and develop and grow in a life of following Jesus and the values that Jesus taught and that means my everything yeah um I think in my earlier years it would always look like practically what does that look like um I have been wired just in me from being a very little girl like my eyes were beyond where I lived I wanted to go to the nations and so when I was younger, that would look like practically, what does it mean to be a disciple? So it means I've got to get out there. I've got to serve the poor. I've got to, you know, do things. And um, the more I've walked on, the more I realize it, it's that heart thing. Yeah. And so it's, it's the thoughts, it's my attitudes. It's, am I really loving from the heart? You know, rather than just in an action of feeding right. someone, which is super, super important. Um, but, Am I loving? Am I judging? Um, what is my heart attitude and my thinking as I walk following Jesus? It's quite holistic. We're talking about yeah. what we do, how we, and I guess that's our character. How I, yeah. How is my character being formed? Uh, is what's coming out of me anything close to what yeah. you'd hope for? And, and if not, why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, the word disciple in, in the Greek when it's recorded in the, the New Testament is something along the lines of metathis, and it means to be a learner. Yeah. So it's kind of like a lifelong learning process. So just can you just tell us a little bit about how, how did that begin for you? So many of us started off in church life maybe, but there's a, there come, I'll tell you my story really quickly. So I, I, I would have been, I went to church from the age of dot and uh, you know, my, my dad's a Baptist minister, but it took coming to university actually to Sheffield and then um, 
going to a church which said not just you come to church and so on and you worship and you do the stuff but actually you you are intentional you deliberately shape your life around following Jesus and that was different for me and I realized actually I'm not doing that you know I was kind of 21 22 and there were other things that were shaping my life um, common to many 21 22 year olds Um, and I decided to try and weed some of that stuff out and but also to bring in the life and the the, the hope of God and the justice of God and that kind of thing into my everyday. So how, how, did, how would you say that you, you kind of became or what, what prompted you to become a disciple or try to become one? I think, like yourself, Nick, I was brought up in the church. Um, my parents basically ran as lay people the church I grew up in. And I'll be really honest, I, I couldn't stand it. Um, <laughs> I actually... The, Hopefully they're not watching this episode. <laughs> um I actually never had a problem with God, but I just really didn't like church. And I said, as soon as I was old enough, um, that was it. I was done with church. But God has a sneaky way. And so I have spent my most of my life in ministry. I I did actually spend a significant portion of my life um, working in the hospital as a medical professional. Um, But most of my life has been dedicated to ministry. Um, So how did that start in me? Um, I think I just simply believed that if God was real, then I had to live a life or wanted to live a life that was pleasing to him. And so I read the stories of the Bible and took them to heart. Um, And I think it would be challenging. I remember I swapped schools um, to go to a different school in sixth form. And there was a girl um, in the friendship group that I formed that just for some reason took an instant dislike to me, whether it was my faith or or what it was. (laughs) Why wouldn't people like me, I right? know, right? <laughs> but took a dislike to me. And I remember at that time just thinking, well, Jesus loved his enemies. Wow. And so this is what I need to do. And mm. it was really hard. And I remember one day something happened. And so I went to the local shop and I bought this girl's flowers. And cool. it actually had a huge impact. I don't ever think she liked me, but... Um, it was kind of like, well, what would have Jesus done in that situation? I wish I could say I've handled every situation in my life <laughs> like that. Um, but I came to believe that, you know, to walk, there was benefit in walking rightly with God. We don't always get the results we want. Um, but I feel like we should live a life pleasing to God. The Bible says, you know, for the Old Testament, it'll go well with us. Um, yep. And um, so it, to me, it was kind of a no-brainer. Wow. And, and, and what you said a few minutes ago, you said you, you, you saw it in the Bible and you took it seriously. Mm-hmm. And I think that's massive, isn't it? Because if we're not careful, we can design life around, I guess, ourselves, yeah. our wants and needs, hopes and dreams. Um, and sometimes the more you engage with, with God through the Bible, uh, the more you see that actually he gives you the desires of, of yeah. his heart. And they become your desires. And you can often get completely side swiped by what he wants you to do, as opposed to what you might have started off doing. Um, and that's, that's discipleship, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about the, the disciples of Jesus, the first guys, um, they, at least the men that we have the records of, uh, they, uh, they were fishermen and then they were sideswiped by meeting the Lord and suddenly they became preachers and then some of them were martyred. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's not what, how you start off thinking life's going to develop. So in, I'm just thinking about deeper, actually, our school of ministry as well. It's, a, it's something that, I mean, there are many schools of ministry around the world and and the and it's to do with the process. It's to do with shaping a person. These things don't happen overnight. No. Do they say so just can you just talk to us a little bit about kind of how, how disciple how you shape yourself as a disciple and how deeper helps with that as well? Actually. Absolutely. I mean I'd have the privilege to see and be part of many schools of ministry mm. around the world. I myself did one when I was twenty one, yeah. um, a part time one. And that oh. just put in so many building blocks and foundations in my life of how to think through things and how to grapple with certain things and also exposure to different ways of doing things yeah. um and so i've watched the ones which have done you know you you know where you spend a whole year full time or a few years full time or you go off across the world and do a few intense weeks and all of them have massive massive value when i was asked to write deeper here what i did was i looked at the different aspects and all of them have many benefits and you know also, there's pitfalls to some yeah. of them. So, you know, you can see if you're doing something full time for a long time, you can get quite institutionalized. Get if into you, a bit of a bubble. Absolutely. If you go across the world um, and do one somewhere else, well, how does that work 
when you get home, like there's certain stuff that you just get ingrained in you and is amazing and will change exactly how you think, who you are, how you do life. Um, but what does that look like working through things here? What yep. I was kind of really keen on is that if we do a school, it has to be holistic. So as much as it learns of like, well, how do I lay my life down to serve and love, but you know, other people, but what does that mean in my relationships here? Because uh-huh. if I can go across the world and, you know, love somebody yeah. in a village yeah. somewhere else, but then I come home and I can't be kind to my family or the people around me, then yeah. there's something not of the heart of Jesus right, in right, that. Right. So what does it look like to do all parts of our life well? What does it look like to be studying the Bible and, you know, looking at the sayings of Jesus, but then how do I interact with my work colleagues and, right. or, you know, the people out there who don't yet have a relationship with Jesus? Um, what what does that look like? And so for me, it was so important that it the course was um, ingrained in all parts of our life, which is actually why we've done it part-time as well. Okay. So you can have um, a job at the same time that you can be in the real world or some people it might be that they're you know full-time moms or doing other things we've had people do all sorts of things haven't we over the years absolutely and you know some people they've been doctors they've been teachers they've been working in cafes they've had their own business and and some we introduced the internship last year and so we actually had some one or two who were interns as well and so that was more intentionally like you know what I'm going to give my full time year yep, yep. Um, to this but that's felt right in their journey at that time that they almost put the brakes on and were like okay I'm going to come out for the year and serve right so again we're talking really practical I was just thinking back to my, my experience uh, as I guess I was in my mid 20s and I found myself in a a small uh, Anglican church in Sheffield in a slightly rough-ish kind of estate area of Sheffield um, and I didn't quite know why the Lord God put me there but um, partly it was to do what you've described which was to learn how to actually not just how to translate what you see in the Bible and the kind of big ideas you know mm-hmm. let's live a life of social justice and of peace and so on and actually well how do I live that in person when I so we lived in a, in a maisonette me and two lads we lived in a maisonette with two bedrooms so every day uh matt one of my housemates would would change the sofa back into his bed at the end of the day you know and go to sleep and then put it back into the sofa bless him and we lived uh, uh some of our uh neighbors were drug dealers um some of them were very old and retired and and uh, most of them were somewhat poor uh, and in this little local church uh, god kind of challenged me really well how do you love the poor actually how do you love your neighbors literally your next door neighbors show them love first of all um, you know, I wanted to change the world and become like, you know, head of the EU, uh, yeah, the EU or the world president or something uh, and put all of this stuff into action and have policies. And, and God said, no, get your hands dirty. Uh, love the person next to you. Learn how to share the gospel. And so we visited children in their homes with their parents' permission, uh, you know, and did kids clubs and all that kind of stuff that you, uh, that churches do. Um, and it, and it, I guess it, we didn't see huge growth. What we saw was growth in, in our lives and in the people that were there became disciples because we were shaping what we did and how we thought um, in action as well. And I guess the other, th- the other side of that was um, the Bible. We really dug in. Uh, at that time, we read uh, uh, Dallas Willard, who, who's um, died now, but it's brilliant. You can, anything you can get hold of by Dallas Willard is amazing. Uh, the modern equivalent would be John Mark Comer, just the same material written by a millennial guy who's a little bit more trendy looking than Dallas Willard. Um, it's the same stuff. Uh, and, and so it was actually allowing the Bible to shape us and, and uh, bring ourselves under the authority of God's scripture in the way that he said you should live. So how about you? Because you, start, you started off as a, like a medical thing to do with eyes. It's one of those. Tell us the long word. Orthoptist. Right, it's one of those ones. You're an orthoptist and then you find yourself overseas Mm -hmm. in some kind of ministry um what how did that happen well what's the discipleship journey that you go from living in Sheffield and to living somewhere else overseas why why it's a good question um my heart was always wired to love the broken so actually when I was in Sheffield in my early years I worked part-time at the hospital and um I used to work with teenage moms and um 
I loved it. Like yeah. I had one of them with her children come and stay over at my house. My house and car looked like nurseries. Yeah, um, like- and I really believed in what does love look like around us. Um, I got to the point I felt, you know what, I want to go overseas. It, it was just in my heart. Um, and I started to look around and there was one particular ministry which just 100% in my opinion, went after the heart of God um, because they fully were all about God's love and they were also about that God, it looks like if people are hungry, you feed them. And so it was humanitarian, but it was 100% God-focused. And they also believed in the power of the gospel. Really important. Really important. So they believed, you know, if... You know, if they're sick, then God can heal them. And if that's that thing not, about taking the Bible seriously, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And if there's no food, then we pray for it to multiply. And right. so, just what Jesus did. Exactly. It wasn't a magic formula, but they believed in the power of God. Yeah. And so I actually was so hungry at that point. And I did spend a season of my life. I went out, it was Mozambique. I went to initially. Um, I'd already done a series of missions to Romania and other places, but I headed out to Mozambique and I did the school. And honestly, I did not want to do the school. I was 28 years old at that point. Um, I'd been brought up in a church that had you know, believed investing in young adults. So I'd done their training course. I'd done all the training that was on offer and I was done. I just wanted to be a real missionary. Um, but the way to get into that missionary is you had to do their school. So I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Another three months of my life. It's a humbling experience though, isn't it? Was it was humbling. But you know what? In the first week, I'd actually, for two years before then, I'd gone one day a week um, to a local theological college, actually with you, Nick. Come on, we went to St. We John's, went to St. John's, John's and then um, learned a load of stuff, which I'm very grateful for. But I realised in my 12 weeks in Mozambique, I learned more mm. in that 12 weeks. And I realised within the first week of that school how much I needed to do that school, that I'd had all this training, and yet there were other bits of my heart that yeah. needed my eyes open. Because it becomes more of a school of the heart at that it point. It became a school of a heart. And but there was all kinds of things, you know, you, you presented with different scenarios and outside your comfort zones. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, so it's much more about character and, and out of a character change and allowing God to speak to your heart and actually break. Sometimes we have yeah. to be broken before we can put us back together. <laughs> then the action comes and you do do things for God yeah. and you can see miracles. Yeah. But it, it usually flows as a discipleship process from inner change into outer it does. behavior. It does. And that looks different every season of your life. So from that point onwards, I spent seven years out on the mission field, literally all over the world. And it was actually broken up by, I spent at times years back here yep. um, or months back here. And sometimes I lived by... Um, painting and decorating or going back to my hospital jobs and at other times I was literally um, coordinating a disaster relief response in the Horn of Africa or in Japan post the tsunami or all different places and then God brought me back to Sheffield um, which I'm really if I'll be honest that was the last thing kicking (laughs) and screaming it really was and we actually I was part of um, starting the well and you know pre our time here we would meet and we'd pray and I was so excited about this happening but um, I wasn't going to be here so actually for our launch service I was in Australia you know yeah um, really I wasn't going to be here and it was I hear it was great I watched it 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 was great Um, but sometimes our our discipleship journey is one of a heart but out of that flows the actions and I think it's as we go through the journey that things come out in the in those moments we don't expect so I ended up um taking a team out to the Horn of Africa in the middle of a famine and it it was super dangerous and I nearly missed it um honestly because it it was terrifying and in the weeks leading up to it I had to make a final decision that if everything I read in the bible was true then I I do it right because that's what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus now there's other dangerous scenarios I've been placed before me and it's not felt the right thing to do yeah but because we only do what we see the father, we see doing. The father doing but I knew the father would challenge me on that one and right. I got to the point of like if if who you are is what you say you are then I go because you can multiply the food you can yeah. multiply the money you can give us what we need the drivers the you know translators the, the open doors the connections right. and as I did that it then gave you kind of stand on a platform of faith for the next thing yes and it doesn't mean the next thing is any easier or any less terrifying it's just you've got a level of 
boldness to jump onto the next thing and the next thing. And so in in my head, the journey of discipleship was going to be doing, you know, bigger and greater things. Yeah. But actually what he did was he brought me home. Yeah. And the walking with faith looked like living in the comfy suburbs of Sheffield, which I actually really battled against for a couple of years. Yeah. And, you know, starting a discipleship school here, which yeah. is a huge privilege because as we watch lives change it's been incredible well in a sense what you're doing is you're raising you it was your opportunity now to raise disciples yeah. who raise disciples to actually pour back in something of what god had done in your life yeah but i mean uh, one of the things that naomi and i always throw around is this whole idea of being a missionary yeah and uh you'll say things like i was you know i was on the mission field yeah. and you were on a mission field in africa but i mean one of the challenges for most of us most people listening watching this is how am i a missionary where I am. So you may have a job, you know, a day, a nine to five or whatever. You may be raising a family or investing into grandchildren or whatever it is, um, or, you know, everything in between, maybe between employment and so on and so forth. Um, and, and yet we can only be where we are right now. So, so that's what I love about Deeper is that it trains us to become disciples. And that's the thing that translates whatever your context yeah. So actually, I would consider myself to be a missionary to the city and uh, region of Sheffield. Uh, and and that's where God's brought you back for this time. Absolutely. Because missionary, I think, is it's our mindset, isn't right. it? Who missionary am I, is our mindset. It's our mindset. Who am I living for? It's you know, that. one of my favorite stories um, from the days of, I think, when the world was still being discovered. And there's um, a boat full of people um, missionaries who went out to the South Pacific and there's one particular island um, which was known as very savage and was likely to kill everybody and this group of missionaries went out on a boat and they went rejoicing and singing and someone said to them afterwards they did survive they didn't get killed was like when you knew you were possibly going to a certain death why were you singing rejoicing and one said well I'm already dead uh -huh. and I love that and I love that therefore we didn't go in misery but there's something about as I'm here to, you know, serve the Lord and lay my life down. It, it doesn't mean that I don't have and I don't get to enjoy life. Um, but it changes the mindset. And so if I know I'm doing that here, that I don't have to be in another nation of the world or in a war zone or where there's just been a disaster, but I'm doing that right here, right now in Sheffield, then our mindset is different. And so if it means, therefore, I need to prefer others or I need to go on the streets and it's uncomfortable, I'm scared and it's cold and it's raining or i go into a different subculture within the city yeah i mean there are plenty i don't know what to say and they laugh at me then it's okay because yeah. i've made that decision colossians that, 3 3 yeah i'm living i've died my life is hidden in christ absolutely yeah. absolutely and i think we can sometimes have this division and i know i've probably done that in my life where it's like missions is here and my life is over here right and but the, the, the journey of discipleship is, that, as you say, it becomes one. It becomes that we just follow Jesus yeah. today. What does it look like for me to follow Jesus today where I am? Yeah. And and we do it in community. Yes. And that's been, it's certainly been my experience that I've, I've, um, I'm, I'm a better person because I've chosen to share my, my struggles and my op opportunities with other people. And they've kind of said, yes, Nick, that's great. Have you thought about this? Look at your character here, you know, work on this. Um, that's not Christ-like yet. And, and Deeper is all about going on a journey with a people, isn't it? It is. I learn something from the people who do Deeper every single year yeah. and how they do life. This walk we do together in encouraging each other on, challenging each other, but just doing it together. Like, life's not designed to be done alone. And so we yeah. get to do it together. And we getting to do it together with a group of different people is even more fruitful because if you're all the same, then... You don't actually yeah. learn much, yeah. but when you're you a rub such off against each a other's experiences, group, you learn so much. It's incredible. Brilliant. So, guys, let's uh, think about deeper. So, how can how can we find out more about it and so on? Well, you can go on the website, have a look, have a look at the stories. Um, you can contact us, have a chat to us. How might it work in your context? Yep. Um, and have a chat yes we'll that's the first step there. isn't it yeah and we've uh, people have joined deeper who've been retired we've had uh, yeah. 70 as the eldest uh, lady lynn she was amazing oh we love lynn lynn brought the whole place on fire yeah. and traveled with us to africa yeah we we, we ran a, a ministry trip to kenya and lynn was there uh, and the youngest we've had is about 18 isn't it 18, 19, um, yeah. so if you're if you're this year maybe you're wondering what to do next uh you know maybe university isn't 
looking like it might happen or whatever, you've got a bit of time or a gap here, uh, do consider that as well. Um, and so we'll t we, we, we're open to most life stages and ages uh, and just come and have a chat with us, wellsheffield.com slash deeper. Um, and rather than it being a course, it, it really is an experience, isn't it? it and is. a journey. Yeah. And we journey towards Jesus. Yeah, we walk it out together and yeah. we have a lot of fun. Yes, we do. Along the way. Yes, we, we, we laugh a lot, which yes, is very important. Very important. Gnomes, thank you so much for joining us on Wise Lives. Thank you. What a wise life you have been leading. I bless you. Thank you so much. Um, maybe could you just pray for us for a minute uh, that we'd live that kind of life, that we've become disciples in the everyday? Absolutely. I'm going to pray one of my favourite prayers here. So, okay, um, go for it. Father, I just want to thank you that um, you gave us the Bible so and the life of Jesus, so we know how to follow you in this life. And so, Father, we're just asking, would you give us a greater hunger yeah. to be like you, to walk like you, yeah. to live a really spiritual life here on earth, where we have access to the whole of heaven here on earth. Yeah, on. And, Father, would you do in me whatever you want, so you can do whatever you want through me. Father, we know that living life to the full is living a radical life following you. And so would you give us the boldness to lay down what we need to lay down in order that we can pick up life and life to the full? Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. That's a fantastic prayer. Thank you so much. Bless you. Look out for Deeper on the Welsh Airfield website or leave us a comment and so on on all of our different social media for Wise Lives. And we look forward to seeing you on another Wise Lives episode really soon. Bless you guys. Mm -hmm.